Hello, my name is SD Hong, and I'll be presenting mitral valve and valve and valve and ring tips, tricks, and outcomes. There is a need to advance mitral valve and valve and valve and ring as patients prefer bioprosthetic heart valves. Given the limited lifespan of bioprosthetic heart valves and consideration of younger patients, there is a higher probability for future reintervention. Additionally, mitral repair is also performed with increasing frequency, and approximately 70% of degenerative mitral valves are repaired. In the past, redo surgery was the only option for these patients. However, growth in transcatheter interventions has offered mitral valve and valve and valve and ring to high risk surgical patients. For best results in these patients, we need to understand differences of mitral rings and valves, patient selection, technical challenges, and post procedural management. In this article, we aim to simplify and highlight key points of patient selection, components of procedural planning, and steps on performing mitral valve and valve and valve and ring. We will also review common issues experienced with mitral valve and valve and valve and ring and how to avoid these potential complications, as well as tips on post-operative care. Starting with mitral valve and valve procedural planning, there are four important components that we will review. First, surgical heart valve identification followed by determining the true internal diameter of the surgical heart valve, which can be facilitated through identification of the valve's label size. True ID is critical in selecting the size of the transcatheter heart valve, and understanding details of the surgical heart valve, such as the fluoroscopic appearance, can assist with procedural planning and optimal placement of the transcatheter heart valve. And finally, selecting the proper transcatheter heart valve type and size to fit the patient's specific parameters and to best avoid complications. Identifying the previously implanted bioprosthesis is a very critical step in procedural planning, as the type and size should be clearly identified whenever possible. Although the valve may not have an entirely unique fluoroscopic appearance, details can be easily confirmed from the operative notes or information from the valve manufacturer. Next, the valve type and size determines the valve true internal diameter, or true ID, which is the mechanical internal diameter after the leaflet mounting on the stent frame. It is important to note that label size, external stent diameter, and internal diameter may be misleading if used to select the right transcatheter heart valve size. True ID information for the specific valve types and sizes can be easily found on the Mitral Valve and Valve app, which was created by Dr. Vinnie Bapat. Understanding the unique fluoroscopic appearance of each surgical valve is critical in performing the procedure successfully. An important region is the narrowest diameter of the surgical valve, which is referred to as the neoannulus. Using fluoroscopic landmarks to orient oneself, it is important to identify the level of the neoannulus, as this level is relevant for ideal and secure transcatheter heart valve positioning. Therefore, familiarizing with distinguishable fluoroscopic appearances of different devices is critical. As mentioned previously, this information is readily available in the Mitral Valve and Valve app. Here we include some examples of common mitral surgical valves, the Epic or BioCore, Hancock 2, Magna, and Mosaic. The red arrow in each of the figures depicts the level of the sewing ring, which also is the level of the neoannulus. In Hancock 2 and Magna, the level of the sewing ring is easily identifiable. However, identification of this level can be challenging in certain valves or patient populations. First, let's discuss the mosaic valve in the lower right panel. As you may notice, unlike the other valves, the sewing ring is not accompanied by a clear fluoroscopic landmark. Similarly, the sewing ring marker in the EPIC or BioCore valve in the upper left panel may be extremely hard to visualize under fluoroscopy in obese patients or patients with COPD. The most common device used is the balloon expandable Sapien platform, which can be implanted through all the different approaches. There is limited experience with devices such as Lotus, which is currently implanted only through the transapical access. However, transseptal access is the least invasive and preferred for balloon expandable platforms. Initially, mitral valve and valve used the transapical approach. However, with increasing experience and better delivery systems, Less invasive approaches, such as transseptal, is currently the preferred approach. Although, in highly selective cases, transatrial has also been used. This slide demonstrates the mitral valve and valve app functionality. Starting with the leftmost panel, once you open the app, you can click on the valves and select the specific type of valve in your patient. For example, here we have mosaic selected. Once you select your valve of interest, as seen in the next frame, 
The app provides information about the valve and you may then select the size of the valve. In this example, we selected size 27, which will then direct you to important dimensions such as the true ID. As seen in the rightmost panel, there is a link with true ID that can explain the concept in greater detail. You may also select the transcatheter heart valve selector, which will be presented in the following slide. Continuing with the same example shown before, for Mosaic 27, suitable TAVI choices are presented. If you select Sapien 3, size 23, 26, as shown in the following panel, information regarding optimal deployment and placement are provided. As shown in the final frame, the play video link directs you to a recording that demonstrates ideal placement and deployment of the transcatheter heart valve and the surgical heart valve. Shifting our focus to mitral valve and ring, mitral valve and ring is more complex due to the diverse ring types and properties. Therefore, it is important to determine the ring type and size previously implanted as this information will determine patient suitability for mitral valve and ring. Unlike surgical valves, rings may not be unique in their fluoroscopic appearance. Additionally, some rings are not visible under fluoroscopy, which can make the procedure even more challenging. Rings can be broadly classified as complete, nearly complete, or incomplete. They can also be classified as rigid, semi-rigid, or flexible. Next, we will also discuss four important ring properties to be considered for mitral valve and ring suitability, which are the ability to become circular, the ability to provide a good anchor for secure transcatheter heart valve placement, to determine if ring size and dimensions can accommodate currently available transcatheter heart valves, and finally, the degree of radio opacity. Ultimately, the ring classifications and set of properties have important implications in procedural planning. For example, rigid and semi-rigid rings provide a good anchor, while flexible complete rings may or may not provide a good anchor, and complete rings, regardless of rigidity, do not provide a secure anchor. Let's now discuss the four important ring properties that we mentioned earlier. First, ring circularity is one of the important ring characteristics. Since circularity is critical to avoid deformation of transcatheter heart valves and to avoid paravalvular leaks. Semi-rigid rings and flexible complete bands can be circular or nearly circular, whereas rigid rings cannot attain circularity due to their rigid construction. The next important feature is the ability to provide anchoring. Semi-rigid and rigid rings can provide a good anchor. On the other hand, flexible complete bands can provide a good anchor only if a smaller size is used. Incomplete rings and bands cannot provide adequate anchoring. The third component we will review is the ring size. Ring sizes over 34 are not suitable for mitral valve and ring as the largest available transcatheter heart valve is the Sapien 3 in size 29. To summarize, rigid rings provide good anchoring but lack ability to become circular, while semi-rigid rings provide the best balance between circularity and anchoring capacity. Here are some examples of the four general different ring types. From left to right, we have semi-rigid ring, rigid ring, complete band, and incomplete band. Semi-rigid rings, such as the Sword Memo 3D, can provide a good anchor as well as circularity. Rigid rings, such as the St. Jude Rigid Saddle, can provide a good anchor but poor circularity. Complete bands, such as the Duron Anchor band, can attain circularity and anchoring but only if used in small sizes. Incomplete bands, such as the Cosgrove band, does not provide either anchoring or circularity. We will review the final ring property, which is radio opacity. Some rings can become circular and provide good anchoring but cannot be seen under fluoroscopic appearance. In this case, transesophageal echo is needed. In this example, the St. Jude Seguin ring will require transesophageal echo. Finally, it is important to understand that ring label sizes and the corresponding dimensions lack standardization between different ring sizes, types, and manufacturers. Another consideration is the geometrical changes involved in attaining circularity. For example, once a semi-rigid ring becomes circular, the area and diameter may increase from what is listed by the manufacturer. To assist procedural planning, we recommend using the app to choose the right size transcatheter heart valve in conjunction with acquiring CT area and perimeter of the ring.
On this slide, we demonstrate the functionality of the Mitral app for Mitral Valve and Ring. Once you open the app, as seen on the leftmost panel, you can click on the rings and select the ring of interest. Here we have selected Edwards Physio 1 as the example, which opens the next page that contains important dimensions, as well as the transcatheter heart valve selector that can provide suitable TAVI options. If you select Sapien XT, information regarding placement and deployment are available alongside with the video to supplement guidance. Now for operative technique, which is for both mitral valve and valve and mitral valve and ring, the procedure is to be performed in a hybrid catheter lab or well-equipped catheter laboratory. General anesthesia and hemodynamic support is required along with a clear plan for bailout. Using transesophageal echo, it is important to rule out paravalvular leakage, left atrial thrombosis, and ring dehiscence. Before prepping the patient, check deployment view and confirm that no other radio-opaque objects are overlapping the field of interest. There is an additional information section in the Mitral app as seen on the home page, which provides further information on equipment needed, a step-by-step -step approach, and three case examples provided by experts in the field. More useful information on borderline sizing, ring properties, and true ID are also provided in the additional information section. Next, we will discuss two important complications in mitral valve and valve and mitral valve and ring. First, we will review left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, or LVOTL. It is well known that deeper placement of the device, flaring of the device, narrow AMA angle, and septal bulge will increase the risk of LVOTO as shown in the accompanying figure. Pre-operative CT and echocardiographic planning is critical in identifying neo-LVOTO for a given patient. Neo-LVOTO less than 1.5 cm squared will increase the risk of LVOT obstruction. Early bench work has demonstrated lower risk of obstruction with porcine valves than pericardio valves, which can be attributed to the shorter leaflet height in porcine valves. Newer techniques, such as lampoon as shown in the left figure, and preemptive alcohol septal ablation as shown in the right figure, have shown to reduce the risk of LVOTO. The second complication experienced in mitral valve and valve and mitral valve and ring is the risk of embolization. Due to higher closing pressures on the mitral valve in comparison to the aortic valve, parallel deployment can lead to atrial migration, as seen in the right video clip, or embolization of the transcatheter heart valve, which is seen in the middle video clip. Therefore, conical deployment is more favorable than parallel deployment, which will be shown in greater detail in the following slide. Additionally, correctly oversizing using true ID will also help avoid embolization. To combat the higher closing pressures that is unique to the mitral valve, conical deployment is preferred over parallel deployment due to the minimal or no risk of embolization. This deployment is shown in the accompanying figure. In conclusion, while mitral valve and ring and mitral valve and valve are more challenging than aortic valve and valve, these do come with many advantages, such as avoiding redo surgery, a shorter operation, faster recovery for the patient, and avoidance of blood transfusion. Therefore, to advance mitral valve and ring and mitral valve and valve, further optimizing patient selection by better understanding the valve and ring suitability for these patients, and enhanced procedural planning will improve mitral valve and valve and mitral valve and ring outcomes. Thank you for listening to this keynote series.